Subscribe to Film Companion for your film fix. Hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. Hey guys, welcome to In Style with me, Sneha. Well, he shot the weddings of the likes of Deepika and Ranveer, Virat and Anushka, and even the Ambani's. So on In Style, I'm getting hold of the wedding filmer Vishal Punjabi himself to find out how he creates his magic and basically what goes into keeping a secret wedding secret. Vishal, first things first, I want to know from you, what is the kind of planning that goes into shooting an A-lister's wedding? How much in advance do you come on board? How much of a say do you have in the scheme of things? A lot has to do with how big the wedding will be. Um, depending on the size of the wedding, that much more planning would be involved. So if there are going to be multiple countries, multiple events, each wow. event having hundreds of people or in some cases thousands of people, um, the approach with the number of crew you have, who will be filming where, with what equipment, the edit planning um, and also like the details of the event which would include the floor plans, the lighting plans, um, the flow of people and where they'd be coming in from, the entrances and the exits. Therefore we can make sure we capture the flow of people the most, in the most creative way possible. Without being intrusive. Without being intrusive. Yeah. So you'd want to know where you are um, at any given point of time and where the bride and groom will be because sometimes they'll get ready on location, sometimes they'll get ready in another place and then how they're going to come to the location would be important to know. And then if you're shooting in Bombay, for example, then the traffic is something you should take Factoring. into consideration. So there's a lot of planning involved, but you can't plan to the T like in a Bollywood film where you have a storyboard because you can't anticipate everything that's going to happen. But I think over time with doing this right, then you learn the power of anticipation as well. Are you ever tempted to ask the actors that you work with for a retake because, well, you know, they're used to this stuff. Does that happen? You yeah, well, you can't moment? call them actors, right? And they're brides and grooms oh, yeah. and then there's no, there's no real retake that you will have um, at a wedding. It only happens once. And I think one of the reasons why our films are so special is because we don't make them act. Everything you see is real because it's their memory. Yeah. Um, it shouldn't be forced upon them in what they should do. So. Making them act would make them look uncomfortable, would make you try and be a filmmaker because here I think capturing a documentary is very clear. So how, what you pay attention to is what lens you're using, how you can use the available light to your advantage, how you're capturing the sound to make sure that what is seen is also heard clearly because sound is 50% of your film. And I think in the wedding business, a lot of photographers try and make films, but photographers are not used to the idea of sound being an element to engage an audience with. Um, so we pay a lot of attention to sound and sound design yeah. to make it work. I was a child till morning and now I've grown up suddenly. My wife. You're also creating the music that goes behind each of these memories that you make. Yeah, it's inspiring to edit something to something you have made originally as opposed to cutting it to a Anumalik song or cutting it to a AR Rahman track, as beautiful and as epic as that is, it's already married to a film, it's married True. to a memory. Yeah. And when you make a song for yourself or for a wedding film, it's then married to that wedding film. And then every time you hear that song, it takes you back to that time. I'm actually very curious to know what is the length that you will go to to ensure the privacy of the client that you're working with? Like what are the things you've had to do to ensure that things so we wouldn't secret? allow we wouldn't allow the footage to leave the studio. In some cases I have freelance editors. Some of the best talent we have also don't work in-house with us. So sometimes if we're editing a very high profile wedding or a wedding you've that has had to a be, few of those. We've, ha we've <laughs> had a few of those. And to cut those, we wouldn't allow the footage to leave the studio just in case there's a leak. Um, but other things about who gets to watch it um, and in what conditions they watch it in, um, with what purpose, like it's okay I think for my crew to watch it so that they can learn from what they have done wrong. But I don't think anybody, we can't show it to brides and grooms when we're selling a film which is really sad. <laughs> that is really sad. I know you get close to like what say 3000 requests to shoot weddings a year. What, how many are you able to factor in? Every year it grows, um, earlier it was just me filming. Each year it keeps growing, the number of directors who work with us um, increase and mm -hmm. therefore the number of films, films we can do increase. Able to do. Yeah. The number of editors who are working with us who have been trained by me has increased. 
Um, so now we've got a bigger capacity, we've got a bigger studio. And a lovely um, office. Yes, it keeps us inspired again. And also doesn't let the people go home early. <laughs> Um, so that's an advantage. A very obvious question would be, what does it cost to get the wedding filmer to shoot your film? And how much in advance do I need to book to be able to stand a chance? Oh, it, would, it would depend. It would be, uh, it could go as low as 3 lakh rupees okay. for a wedding that okay. we really like and is really small and it's over a day. Um, it can go as high as 30 lakh rupees for a wedding that's really big that would require the technique um, of a team that can capture something like that. Mm -hmm. um, so it all depends on the wedding itself. It's like trying to buy a car or decorate a house. Um, it's really hard to put a figure to it. Yeah. It's always about how much you want to spend. Obviously, the more money you spend, the more, um, I wouldn't say larger than life, but the more tailored your film would be to what you want. Crafted, yeah. yeah. And what is your process like when someone reaches out to you, say, an Anushka and Virat, you meet with the couple and figure out whether you're vibe? Like, what do you look for when you're agreeing to do a film? I look for whether the bride and groom really want a memory and how important the memory is to them. Therefore, I'll know how much effort we need to put in uh, in the different ceremonies that we know are really important to them or their approach to what they want to do with it, what the purpose of the film is. I think each film or each um, song or each photograph always has a purpose and to understand that purpose is really important. Um, in India, we have the added advantage of knowing whether it's an arranged marriage or a love marriage um, and that really helps me because I would know whether to approach it from the point of view of the family or from the point of view of the couple mm -hmm. um, and for obvious reasons and then it's about where the wedding is happening and why um, who chose the location and why that why is it so important to them what kind of ceremony they're going to have is it going to be Punjabi is it a, a Sikh ceremony is it a Muslim nikah um, because in each one there are different high points which I like to find and I like to hone on and you can't miss and you don't want to miss but each time you want to also be original so you want to find new ways of capturing it without losing the essence, so that's the challenge. So, in a, in a nikah, for example, the duas are really beautiful um, that the Maulana gives right at the end of the wedding and they give you goosebumps when he says these amazing, beautiful things. Or then in, in, this, in, in the uh, Hindu wedding, a lot of people like the feras, but for me the sindoor I find very symbolic. It's the moment, And yeah. it's that one moment that you get where the bride looks at the groom. Invariably, I think that look is very hard to replicate. Um, or in a haldi, the intimacy of a mother and, and our father putting Haldi on his daughter to try and beautify her before she goes to get married is also very special. Um, and each time you want to capture it differently using different techniques, um, but yet not missing the moment and not pushing the boundaries of creativity so much that it becomes absurd. Yeah. What can you tell us about Anushka, Dipika and Vipasha, just as brides that you've worked well, the with? Very the one common factor that they all have that I can tell you about is that they're all very private. No? <laughs> <laughs> and um, I would like to keep it that way. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's why you're the go-to guy when it comes to keeping a secret wedding secret. I hope so. It's the hardest thing to do. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that's the one thing that they all have in common. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Can you at least talk to me about something that's in the public domain, a moment that you're really, really, really proud of having captured from one of these weddings and what went into capturing that moment? Um... I think with Anushka and Virat's wedding, I think the more than um, the moment that happened, I think it was the essence of Sufism um, and a sense of this divine love for God, mm -hmm. which was evident in the two of them and in the light that you saw. That's something I can say because the pictures are out and and um, they do the talking. And, yeah, and and it's 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 for what it's for what you see. I think um, to find that magic at a wedding, I think. We're also very blessed that way, that wherever we point our camera, some magic or the other happens always. You've seen it in the work you've seen, um, where like the, the bird flies or um, the rice falls a certain way or the light hits a certain way. It's always magical. You can't predict these things, um, but they happen nonetheless. And then you know you're at the right place at the right time. What are some of the things that you've learned over almost a decade in the business, uh, in this particular business, and of course all the, the, the experience that you've had as a filmmaker, that what do you got to do to get a wedding film right? Dress well for starters <laughs> so that really? you can integrate with the crowd. Um, people won't well, look at you strangely. That's practical good advice. Yeah, um, don't carry, uh, it's, very, it's very nice to have big cameras because they can do amazing things. Um, but use the right tool for the right moment. If you can shoot with a phone like you are, mm -hmm. um, it would make things really cool because you can get into spaces with people that you wouldn't normally be able to get through. So use the right tools for the right shot. Um, don't try too hard I think to um, 
be everywhere. To be everywhere because you you are one person or as big as your team would be. Um, and be forgiving with your own self. If you do miss that moment, it will come again. Luckily for us in Hindu weddings, the swaha happens a hundred <laughs> times. So um, you can always find ways to be original in that space. Um, I think these basic tips are important to remember when you shoot a wedding. And what do you want to tell a couple that you work with? Like what's, what helps uh, when a couple knows something when they sign on with a videographer? I think again, don't try too hard to know that you're being filmed and you're being shot. Um, be present in the moment. At the, at, when you're getting married at that time, everything's such a blur. All your friends are there, how you're looking. You've never looked so good in your life. Um, you're, you've never worn something as heavy as in your life. So it's all very overwhelming sometimes when you see brides breaking down and crying at the mascara. But I think being present in the moment and understanding why you're crying is important because not to lose that emotion. Um, if you're getting married, don't worry about how your lehenga is looking as much as the fact that you know why you're getting married. That helps. Yeah, that really does help. And like I said, it's just such a lovely office space. I can see these little uh, sheets with like uh, pin-up notes and all of that. I want to know the entire process that goes into and producing the films that you do. So why don't you take me around and I'd love to see your space. Come. Um, this is where we have lunch. This is lunch for all. This is lunch for all. Chef makes food. Every every few months, I keep changing the theme of the table. This is the winter theme. <laughs> and so yeah. you're picking up all of this stuff with travel and with travel at Crawford Market or at weddings. I get little souvenirs from the decorator, <laughs> like this bird. <laughs> One from every wedding you shoot. There you go. Wow, nice. There's the kitchen where chef makes food for all of us. Oh, this feels like home. Um, this is and so then sweet. you have the edit suite in there. Ah, um, that's where the work gets done, eh? Um, my son and I both love planes. The idea is to build a supersonic plane so I can visit him as fast as possible. So we've built a bunch of planes. Um, and that's the camera cupboard where all the cameras are. Oh, so all of your equipment is here? All of my equipment is in there. Yes. This is where we do color correction. Oh. And this is where we do sound. And in there is the pressure room. What this is where all the major editing happens. And that's the rest of the team working in silence. We have a, a rain shed for lunch. <laughs> um, because it's hard to eat in the rain. <laughs> so you basically ensure that everyone's fed, everyone's happy and you get to put out some amazing, amazing... Yeah, my mum says no good food makes good films. So we have to make sure we eat well. Are back. What I just yes. can see very evidently is that the purity that show, that you showcase in your films comes through so well from just the work culture and the space that you put together. Yeah, I think everyone kind of made this together, no? so it's everyone's work culture. It is and it shows. Thank you so much Thank for chatting too. with me on InStyle. It was, it was my pleasure. It was nice spending this time with you. Come, we'll have lunch now. I was on InStyle with Sneha and if you like this video, please subscribe to Film Companion.